In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the rear axle seal, also known as the wheel seal, on this Ford F-150. Keep in mind that you want to have the right one for your truck because from 2009 to 2011, which is what we're working on, Ford used one style differential and 12 to 14 is a different one, so you will most likely need a different part. So having said that, if you need this or any other part, check us out at oneauto.com. Let's get started. Use your 21 millimeter socket, remove all six of your lug nuts, and then remove the wheel. Use a 10 millimeter wrench or socket, break free this slider pin bolt. With this one broken free, let's move to the top one. Break this free now while the caliper is still securely mounted. This one has a vibration damper attached to it, which actually will help because it gives us something to grab onto. So remove this completely. We'll set it aside. Pull this back, leave it right here. Remove the bottom one the rest of the way. You can take this one out completely because it has enough space. With the help of a pry bar, let's uh, pry this caliper piston in a little bit, just like this. Not all the way, just enough to get this caliper off of here. When you pry this off, pry from the bottom, this pad is stuck, so it's going to have to uh, unseize. Basically, both pads need to swing up and out in order for this caliper to come out of here. There we go, just like that. Now you can swing it, unhook it from the top, and there we go. You can flip it over. We'll pull this bolt slider pin out and then set this up on the leaf spring. Basically what you're aiming for is to not put any pressure on this brake hose, so don't just let it dangle. Now let's take off the rotor. Usually you can just wiggle it back and forth. If it does not let you pull it off, either it's seized onto the hub surface of the axle or the parking brake shoes are grabbing it and don't let you pull it off. If you think it's seized onto the hub, you can use these two bolt holes and stick two bolts through, pull this away. If you think it's the parking brake shoes, I will show you in a second where you can contract them, de-adjust them so you can have them release the brake rotor. For me, it comes right off as it should. If you look on the bottom here, now with the rotor off, this right here is the adjuster. You're going to use a screwdriver or a little pry bar. Come in from the back side, there's going to be a hole, and you can adjust the e-brake shoes inward to release the rotor, which is exactly what I was talking about. So if you think these are grabbing on too tight, you can release them before you pull off the rotor, so you can pull off the rotor. With a screwdriver, I'm going to turn this in, well, from my direction upwards. If you're going from the back side, it'd be down. But basically what I'm trying to do is remove pressure off of these shoes. As I remove pressure, it'll make it easier for me to remove these springs. I'm just going to go all the way or until this adjuster is no longer applying pressure to both ends. You can use a screwdriver or a little pry bar to do this, whatever works best for you. Also, I have... Uh, this is coated in oil for me. There's an axle seal leak, which of course we are addressing, but this is making it so that for me, this turns very easily. Often, if these are not serviced properly, they get rusty. So what you can do in that case is spray it with some rust penetrant, work it back and forth, and hopefully you can free it up. To remove this spring, I'm going to pry it away from the shoes just a little bit, and there are multiple ways of doing this. I like to use some locking pliers these seem to be a little too large, so I'm going to use my smaller ones. Needle nose locking pliers work great for this because you can clip them on nice and tight and then pull on the spring, pry it right off of here. When you remove it, make sure that you note which direction it goes in. This one is symmetrical on both ends, so it doesn't matter which way you put it back. Now you can pull out on the two shoes, remove the adjuster. We'll obviously clean this up thoroughly, set it aside. Now for the top spring, same theory. I'm gonna pry it away, clip it with my needle nose locking pliers, and uh, hopefully it works out. Sometimes they're a little 
a little stiff. There we go. Pull it out and away. Now you can unclip it from the other side, or unhook it, I should say. There it is. It's symmetrical, just like the bottom one. Now with it unhooked, just pull it away and set it aside. Now let's unclip these retainers. The easiest way to do this is to just pry this in. Try to have the, uh, the retainer stay. Push the clip down. Oh, there we go. That comes right off. You can take this out. Remove the parking brake shoe. Remove your pin. Well, through the back side. There we go. And then we'll do the same to the other side. And on the other side, same deal. Try to pry this down. Clip up. There we go. Take this out. Take the shoe off. Take the pin out. With a collection bucket underneath, remove all the 13 millimeter bolts holding this cover on. Pull it away. You may or may not need a pry bar or a screwdriver to tap in here and uh, pry it out. Now let's spin the ring gear. It helps to have the, you have to have the truck in neutral for this, so make sure you chalk off your rear wheels. You wanna spin it until you can see this bolt right here. This right here is a 3 8 bolt. If you only have a 10 millimeter, be very careful because it could strip it out. Break it free and remove it all the way. They do have thread locker on them, and these threads, so they are pretty tight. Once you loosen it up, you should be able to pull it out by hand. There we go. Take it out all the way. Spin the ring gear back up a little bit, and that is so we can pull this pin out. You want to be able to reach it from the back side. Push it up. Okay, with that bolt out, I like to use a magnet and uh, get this pin out. Sometimes they're a little stuck in here. There we go, just push it from the back side. Sometimes it helps if you spin the gears a little. Be careful though, because this pin actually holds these two top and bottom spider gears in. You don't want to keep moving this with no pin in here because they can pop out. I'm gonna use this bolt to help pry this out the rest of the way. It's not usually this stuck, but it looks like there's a lot of uh, goo buildup here. Uh, this is a limited slip differential, so this also could be wear and tear from those clutches. But the pin itself is in good condition. If I wipe it off, I know I have a couple wear marks here, but you can't actually catch your nail on them. So this is just discolored from the axle shafts hitting it. It's very important that you inspect this so that uh, you know whether you need a new one or whether you can reuse it. This is totally reusable. Like I said, there's no damage here. There's no physical damage, it's just discolored. So I'm gonna clean this up and we can continue. Now take your axle shaft from the hub side, push it in. As you can see, this exposes the C-clip it's a little tough sometimes to get that magnet in there. It wants to stick to everything, but you can pull this out. There it is. Inspect this as well. It's in good condition. There's no physical damage here. This is just discoloring, so that's perfect. We can reuse this. If this is not in good condition, replace it. I'll wipe it off so you can see. There we go. Replace it because this is all that holds your axle shaft in. If this fails or falls off, axle's going straight out. Now you can grab onto the hub side of the axle shaft and slide it right out. I have a rag in my hand because a lot of times it'll be covered in gear oil, so I'm just going to wipe it off as it comes out. That way I don't make a mess everywhere. Now let's remove the axle seal, take a pry bar or a seal puller, but pry bar works just as well, and pry it out. Now take your new seal. I'm gonna add some petroleum jelly to the inside of this seal, or the inside of the inner seal. 
right where the spring is, the petroleum jelly is here so that it can prevent the spring from popping out. Once you grease it, it'll prevent it from like flinging out as you drive the seal in. Also, the reason I'm using petroleum jelly and not any other grease is because it's petroleum based. It'll mix in with the oil that is inside this rear differential over time and uh, it will not basically separate. If you use anything else, it's going to start clumping up and well, it's not going to blend together. I'm just going to take the rest and put it on the inside here where the axle goes in. And now, of course, there's only one way that this will go on and that is this way. Start it. We'll use our seal installer and drive it in. You want to make sure that you hammer on the outside. If you don't have a seal installer, I recommend a rubber mallet. Just tap it evenly all the way around until it's flat up against the axle tube. Get your seal installer lined up, tap it in. You heard that noise difference. That means it's bottomed out. That's it. Seal's installed. Now let's take the axle shaft, slide it in. Be careful of your seal, so go slow. Try to support the weight of it. Okay. Now, once you get most of the way in, you'll see it bottoms out. You'll have to grab it, tilt it down at the front. That'll swing the back up. Try to find basically the, the hole that it's supposed to slide in. Give it a couple twists and turns. Eventually it should slide into place. There we go. Now that it's in, give it a couple twists to line up the splines. Push it in all the way. There we go. With the axle pushed in all the way. In this particular case, you'll see that you may or may not have one of these little rings here and it's squished on one side and then symmetrically squished on the other side. This is where the C-clip actually uh, goes on in this groove here, but in my case, I have this, which is kind of like a little um, ring, I guess, that makes the C-clip stay in place a little tighter. So I have to line that up, push the C-clip in, and as you can see right now, it doesn't want to fall off. Most times it does want to fall off, so that little ring helps. Now that the C-clip is in, pull out on the axle, and that's going to make sure that it goes in here and uh, basically lock it in place. So now we can put that center pin through. Now let's put the pin in. Make sure that you put it in with the hole facing the top right here where this locks in. I cleaned it up. I also cleaned up in here a little bit with a rag and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this. I'm just gonna use the, uh, the gear oil that is recommended in this differential. Just a thin coating. This way it'll slide in a little bit easier hopefully. A lot easier than it came out for sure. So now I'm gonna slide this through. Now, if your spider gears don't line up, it's probably because the axle shaft spun them. And when you spin this one, it actually pushes the top and bottom either in or out. So if it's not perfectly lined up, try to spin the axle. There we go. See how that lines up. There we go. All right, so that went all the way in. Now I have this uh, locking pin bolt with some blue thread locker on it. I cleaned up the threads. It's gonna slide it through. And if this doesn't line up in there, spin one of the axles and that should turn the pin just a little bit or at least allow it uh, so that you can, or at least release it so that you can turn it by hand. Start this in, bottom it out. Take your socket. This is, was the, uh, this was the 3 8 socket. Make it nice and snug. Now I'm gonna take a razor blade. There was a lot of RTV here, so I'm gonna scrape this off and then you can either use new RTV or use a gasket. The reason I recommend a razor blade is because anything that is very abrasive, uh, it, will, it could damage the surface to where it's not flat anymore. And in that case, you'll have some serious issues sealing this back up. So try to keep it flat. Also, if you have a lot of debris here, in my case, it's just some RTV that I can fling away. I suggest covering the gear set here so that you don't accidentally get a bunch of debris in here, but usually I do that when there's a lot of rust involved. In this case, I can easily fling all the scrapings just away. So, good to go. Just go around, get all the old 
RTV off. And then of course we will uh, degrease it. You want it clean and degreased so that the new gasket can do its job. I'm gonna use some brake parts cleaner on a rag. I'll soak this down and then we'll go around the whole surface, degrease it, make sure it's nice and clean, ready to accept the new gasket. This is especially important if you're using RTV and not an actual gasket. RTV needs to have a dry surface to bond to. If it is not completely dry, it may not stick. So, so I'm, I'm also going inside these bolt holes and I'll spray them out or I'll uh, blow compressed air in them after I put the brake parts cleaner in them. The reason I do this is because oil and debris gets in there and especially if there's oil, a lot of times uh, it could compress to the point where it can cause damage because it can't go anywhere as you put the bolt through. So either it won't torque or tighten properly or you could cause damage to the threads in there from basically over tightening it but due to the compression of the oil. So take the blow nozzle, blow these out. I'm putting a rag over so it doesn't get everywhere. Okay, this looks perfect to me. Let's get the gasket and the cover. I have a gasket. Once again, if you want to use RTV, go right for it. But for the gasket, it only goes on one way, which is this way. If you flip it around, the bolt holes will not all line up. So once you have that figured out, put the cover over and get at least one bolt hole line up. I'm just gonna aim for that one. Get a bolt, stick it through. That'll hold everything in place for you. Start it on by hand, best you can. And then I'm gonna start one down here. I'm basically gonna go across, and once I get two in, I can guarantee that everything is as lined up as it'll be. Now I can just go around a circle, start them all, and of course, we're gonna tighten them and torque them. Doesn't matter where you start, but what does matter is that you go in a cross pattern so this can squish down on the differential evenly. I'm gonna start here, go across, and so on and so forth. They're all tightened, let's torque them. 33 foot-pounds is the torque for these. Now that it's snug, I'm just gonna go around in a circle. Double check them. Okay, that's all set. Now let's fill the differential. Right here on the driver's side front of the differential, you'll have a 3 8 drive plug. Put a ratchet in there, break this free. Remove it the rest of the way. When you pull these out, it's also a good idea to inspect them. Oftentimes they are magnetic. As you can see, there's some buildup on here. This is normal, so if you see it, don't be alarmed. This is normal wear. The uh, bad thing to see is chunks, but this is normal. 
Regardless, let's fill it. This takes almost three quarts of 75W140. And if you have a limited slip differential, which in our case this is, you wanna make sure you put either fluid that already has limited slip additive in it or friction modifier, or you use your separate friction modifier after you've put in your three quarts of gear oil. All right, let's add our gear oil. You'll know that it's full when it starts coming out through the fill plug, not like this. This is just what's dripping on the side of the bottle, but basically if it starts dripping out continuously after you've added almost three quarts, that's how you know it's full. Oh, there we go. That's coming out. So I'm gonna plug it up. Wipe this off. Let's snug this up. As soon as it bottoms out, give it a little extra and you should be all set. Let's put some grease on all the contact points of the parking brake shoes. I'm gonna start up here. If needed, you can clean this up more for me. This is the best it's gonna get. You can use a wire brush. Um, I know this lever is not complete yet. There's a missing piece. I will put that in later. It's gonna be easiest to do that because it keeps falling apart on me. So I'm also gonna put some grease here and over here, you'll see raised areas everywhere where the shoes contact. So that's how you'll know. So three spots on the backing shield here at the top, and then we'll do the same exact thing on the other side. And then we can put the shoes on. I'm gonna put the pin through the back side, just like this. I'm actually going to take a large C-clamp and just clamp this shoe on. So, okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's holding it. And that's what matters. Now, while holding the pin from the back side, slide this locking clip over. I like to take a pry bar and line it up. Press it through. If you can spin the pin from the back side, go ahead. If not, you can grab it with some needle nose pliers, very gently twist it as you push this in, but a lot of times that gets complicated because not only could you rip the head off of this pin, but it could also just spin the whole thing over and over and over without actually turning just the pin and locking it in. So try your best to put pressure just on the side of this without slipping, of course, and then from the back side, slowly turn the pin until it locks in. And do the same to the other side shoe. The only difference on this side is because it doesn't have a deeper hole for the pin, you can most likely just hold it on like this as you're trying to get it on, so no need for a C-clamp. There we go. Take this piece and to put it in, now of course yours should actually stay attached, but if it doesn't, clean it up, just wire brush it, Mine was somewhat clean. It's never gonna look perfect again, but basically that large pin right there slides in up top. And then these shoes are supposed to slide over. Okay, that shoe is in. Now let's get that top spring in. I have a C-clamp holding this shoe on just because it's gonna keep moving around and falling off. Make sure you hook it right on that round hole over there. And then just like for removal, I'm gonna Put my locking pliers nice and tight on this, grab it, and hook it right on. Okay, release it. It's not completely in, so be careful. Put your pry bar up against it and tap it in. There we go. Make sure it's seated, which it is. Now let's take care of the adjuster before we put it in. Of course I have a new one, even though my old one was in good condition, but I got a new hardware kit, comes with the adjuster, so that's great. You do have to lubricate it, so pull this end off, and I'm gonna add some of the provided grease, which happens to be white lithium grease, but you could just use brake grease if that's what you have. 
And uh, if your old one is seized and in poor condition, replace it or unseize it and lubricate it enough to where it'll function properly. I'm gonna put a bunch of this grease on the threads and then I'm gonna use the adjuster part of it, the, well, the threaded gear here to work that grease into the threads. It's important that it gets kind of all over the threads so that it does not seize in the future. I'm gonna bring it all the way down, then add some grease up top here where there isn't any, and then bring it back up. And that should be all set. There we go. You don't need a whole lot of this. You just need to coat it and then let the, uh, let the threaded part do its job and kind of work the grease in there. I'm gonna put the extra grease on the bottom here so that it can have a little reserve kind of. Slide it through and then take the adjuster, we'll slide it in here. It doesn't really matter which direction you put it in. If you wanna put it in the same exact direction as before, for me, I actually think it was this way, so I'm going to do that. But uh, they're not self-adjustable like rear drum brakes, so it's not, it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, now that this is in, let's put the spring in so that this holds it together. To put the spring on, I grab it with locking pliers, hook it on one end, bring it over, hook it on the other end. This is a very weak spring. And there you have it. That's installed. Now it uh, is time to adjust these parking brake shoes, but not until the rotor goes on so that we know how far to get them. And you don't have to get them perfect with the rotor on because right behind here, there's that hole, which by the way, my kit for the, uh, for the hardware came with a new cover. It's very important that you put that back so water doesn't make its way in. I'm gonna put this plug in from the backside. If needed, I can take it back out to adjust the parking brake later. For now, I can do it through here as I'm putting the rotor on. Before I coat the hub in any seas, I'm gonna put the rotor on just so I can make sure the parking brake shoes are properly adjusted. Actually, that feels pretty good to me. There is, they're, they're barely touching and uh, there's minimal, minimal drag. They're close, so. I'm actually just gonna leave them as is. If you had to adjust them, you would just go down underneath at the adjuster and either bring them out or in. Um, for me, these are brand new shoes, so at the maximum in point, they are perfectly adjusted. It just so happens, so that's great. If you have to clean up this hub, use a wire brush, scrape it. Mine is not in too bad of condition. I'm just gonna scrape off some of the old uh, grease or anises, whatever this is, but it's hardened at this point. Just gonna do this and a little bit of brake parts cleaner at the end. Then we can recoat it so that it doesn't rust in the future and the rotor doesn't seize on. That's, that's the main reason for this. If you have to sand it down, be very careful. If yours is rotted and you have to sand it down, be very careful when you do that because you don't want to remove so much material that you damage the surface. You still want the rotor to sit flush. Rinse it off. Dry it off. And now let's put a thin coating of anti-seize. I'm using the spray kind, so I'm gonna make sure I don't spray it all over the parking brake shoes. If you're using the brush kind, that's actually better in this case because it's a more controlled application. Try to avoid getting it on the lug studs, mainly on the hub surface of the axle. Now let's put the rotor on. I like to start by putting it on backwards just so the axle can hold it for me while I clean it. It's important to degrease this surface. I'm gonna use brake parts cleaner on the inside too where the brake shoes ride and wipe it down. Now this one particularly does not have an oil coating. It has a different special coating to prevent rust. However, there are rotors that have cosmoline oil from the factory to prevent them from rusting while they're on the shelf. Those you absolutely have to clean off, otherwise you get oil all over your brake pads. Slide it down all the way, 
clean this side. Before you install the caliper, put the top bolt in because there won't be enough clearance with the leaf spring. And now, as you slide the caliper on, notice how the outer pad has two hooks at the top here. The inner does not, so that doesn't really matter. But at the bottom, the outer one has a spring that has to seat it down all the way, just like that. If it doesn't go on, make sure you're not crushing the boots and the slider pins here. Start these two bolts in. That one's snug. Get this one started. I cannot torque this top one just because of well, this, so I'm going to take a wrench to it, make sure it's tight. I will come back and torque this one though. 22 foot-pounds is the torque for both of these. There's one. On this damper on the back side, if you pop the cap open, you can see that you can fit a T30 socket. However, the clearance between this and the leaf spring is preventing me from putting a torque wrench on here. So even with this, I still can't torque it. So what I'm going to do is close this up. The torque for these is not high enough to where I can't properly tighten it up with a wrench. So I'm just going to give it the best I can with the wrench. And there you have it. That's tight. If you doubt it, you can always put thread locker on the end of these bolts, but it's not absolutely necessary. Let's get the wheel on. Put on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 150 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Hundred and fifty in a cross pattern. Here we go. Double check them if you want. If not, take it for a road test. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it was helpful, don't forget to leave a like. If you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching.